Hello, everybody, and welcome to our London College of Communications Undergraduate Design School, University of the Arts London Open Day. Woo! Um, we made it. Thank you very much for coming. Um, my name's John. Hopefully, you can all see me. Um, I'll go through just some little logistic logistical things to start out with. Um, so I'll start with some very quick introductions. So uh, we've got me today. I'm John Giannini. I'm the Student Recruitment Coordinator here at London College of Communications. I'm relatively new, so I've been here since just before Christmas. i um, recently a master's student, so also kind of recently a student myself and a very, very big fan of the arts. I did a drama degree, which is a little bit different to the kind of things that you guys will be looking at. Um, we also have um, Suki here. So Suki is one of our student ambassadors um, and I'm just going to get you to introduce yourself quickly, Suki. Hi everyone, I'm Sukriti and uh, I'm studying Interaction Design Arts at LCC. I'm a first year student and last year I was in my foundation year at LCC itself. Thank you very much, Suki. Fantastic. So always good to have a student ambassador here because they're going to be a much more kind of uh, grounded person to ask you questions directly about the course that they are involved in. And um, we also do have Miranda here, who is senior marketing coordinator. Miranda is the invisible kind of voice that we should all be listening to. <laughs> Miranda is in charge of the chat function, which I will explain in a sec. So if you have any questions, you can go on to question first of all um or you can also go onto the chat and ask her anything there um and we will go through there'll be time for questions at the end to really really go through all of those so that's the three of us that are here um a little bit of information about the webinar um so your audio is on mute to help with the broadcast quality if you have any questions uh please write them as i said in the question box on your control panel and a q a session will follow right at the end of the presentation um, this session is being recorded and you'll be sent a copy um, and it will also be hosted on the LCC YouTube channel. Um, and as it says at the bottom, we have other members of staff in the house, their audio has been muted. You might hear from them if needed. In this case, that is only Miranda. Um, I say only, very important. Sorry, Miranda, <laughs> um, but very important. Yeah, so it's Miranda. So any questions and they will be in charge of that. Now, what are we going to be doing in this session? Now, as I've said, and I will break this down in more detail for you, we are going to be looking at the design school at London College of Communications today. So please just take a quick moment to look at the degrees listed here and make sure that that's what you uh, are interested in. If that's what you're here for, then you are in the right place. And I will be going through each of these. Now, if you're looking and thinking, hang on a second, that's not right. Um, there are other sessions taking place. So on uh, Thursday, the 9th of February, so today at three, we have the media school, which covers all of our media school courses. And on Friday, the 10th, so tomorrow at three, we have the screen school courses. Some of you might be signed up for those anyway. Um, but yeah, just in case you're thinking I'm in the wrong place, don't worry. That's uh, you just go onto our website and you'll be able to book on to those. Right, let's get started. So uh, this is an open day for the design school, as I've said, at London College of Communication, but it's important to remember that LCC is part of something much bigger, and that is University of the Arts London. This is one university made up of six colleges, and they are Central St. Martins, London College of Fashion, Camberwell College of Arts, Chelsea College of Arts, Wimbledon College of Arts, and us, of course, as well. Um, so combined, we are about 20,000 students from all over the world. And since 2020, we have been ranked number two in the world for art and design, which is pretty amazing. Um, UAL is made up of our community of students and alumni, but UAL also offers a central support to the colleges. Uh, there are a range of UAL support services available for LCC students, and I'll be talking about more of those at the end of the presentation as well. So a really kind of great institution to be a part of, lots of opportunity for collaboration uh, and meeting all sorts of different people from a, a really diverse uh, list of backgrounds. 
Now, why London College of Communication? Well, first of all, we are lucky enough to be based in the heart of London, in Elephant and Castle, and connected to all of the opportunities that are happening around us. We work with organisations to create bespoke partnerships, solve big challenges, and develop innovative concepts and experiences. Um, we definitely rely a lot on the diversity of our student skills, and we work closely with uh, local communities to help transform them um, and really be a leading voice for anything arts related. Now, at this point, I thought it'd be really nice to hear from Suki about how it was you found LCC and ultimately what made you decide LCC. So I learned about LCC through the internet and through my friends and I learned about UAL as a whole and I learned about its reputation which is what made me want to apply in the first place but then when I read a bit more about it I learned that it has a lot of industry connections and alumni network and the work that was featured on the website really got me like interested in stuff that was going on here it was like a huge variety of things that I saw myself getting into which is why I felt like this was a good place for me to be Fantastic. Yeah, um, definitely. LCC is quite good if you've got a lot of fingers in a lot of different pies. I think it covers a lot of ground, um, which is really fantastic. So thanks, Suki. Yeah, that's really great. Um, so as I've definitely mentioned a few times, we are looking at the design school today. Um, so there's three schools, as I kind of mentioned, there's also the screen school and the media school. And then we have the design school. Um, the design school at LCC provides a structure. Um, but it's also a community that you will be a part of, uh, full of internationally recognised educators, researchers, practitioners, and your as your tutors. Um, the design school, in summary, if I was to kind of summarise that manifesto, the design school at LCC believes in the power of design practice, design thinking, and design research to effect strategic change, shape positive futures and produce cultural value. And right now, uh, I think in the context of everything that's happening globally, that is more important than ever, which is why it's a really exciting institution to be a part of. So, the design school is further split into program areas, which I've got listed here. Each area has undergraduate and postgraduate. So if you were thinking of staying beyond just the th first three year bachelor's course, um, then that would be a possibility. Today we'll be focusing on the undergraduate courses. Um, so I'll talk about each of these programs, uh, well, each of these courses in detail so that you can see the similarities and differences between them. Um, just in case anyone doesn't know, BA stands for Bachelor of the Arts, okay? So the degree title is Bachelor of the Art, Ons is Honours, and then the, uh, the subject is listed directly after that. So um, a huge variety that you can see there. Now let's get started on, first we'll start with uh, the Bachelor's in Design for Art Direction. Now this course explores the practical, conceptual and editorial skills relating to, to design, art direction and creative direction. So it's taught by practitioners with a diverse range of insights and students are really encouraged to use their own experiences uh, and identities and research interests to inform their view of the creative industries and the wider world, okay? Art directors are really crucial in the creative process. They can be seen to play a producer or a director type of role. An art director will be involved in creating an idea and then be responsible for bringing that idea to life, normally with a team of creatives. Uh, on the course, you will learn a range of skills associated with being an art director and working uh, as part of the creative industries. You'll take part in projects and activities that are designed to help you develop a creative vision, a visual language and strong contextual awareness that engages your intended audience. The course takes a multidisciplinary approach to art direction, giving you the opportunity to develop your understanding and use of graphic design, moving image, photography, exhibition and set design. Students on the course produce work that can be conceptual and fine art leaning, as well as projects relating to brands and companies. You will be pitching and presenting regularly, giving you the confidence to communicate your proposals, visual strategies and solutions to collaborators, clients and audiences. And uh, students worked with uh, students often go on to work with magazines, fashion and lifestyle brands, production companies, artists and all sorts of institutions. Um, and straight away, actually, I think a common theme from uh, 
designed for uh, yeah this very designed for art direction a common theme that will be evident across all of our degrees is the fact that as a whole LCC is very much hands-on with its approach it's really about giving you where possible industry experience and making you learn by doing okay we don't want you to really just be sitting in a seminar room and uh, learning how you might do it we want you to actually do it and that's definitely the case across the board so hopefully that will become clear as I can continue. So that's our first one, uh, design for art direction. Next, I will talk about uh, design for climate justice, which is actually new for us. Um, so design for climate justice places design, action and ecological literacy at the centre of the learning. Um, so it works across disciplines, including graphic design, illustration, data visualisation, interaction design. You'll learn how to communicate the urgency of the climate crisis to a range of diverse audiences, along with the responsibility of designers to take action in addressing environmental and social challenges. So as I said earlier, incredibly important for the time that we're living in, hence why it's a new degree that's coming in, um, and yeah, extremely crucial. You'll be supported to develop your pos um, and position in your skills and understanding of visual communication design as a mechanism for addressing environmental and social challenges. So learning how to interrogate, integrate, facilitate, collaborate, um, and ultimately educate towards climate justice in ways that exist, uh, challenge existing inequalities, sorry, okay? So that we've got a quick lowdown on there. Generally developing your understanding of graphic design and data visualization processes will happen in year one and will enable you to communicate climate justice in ways that generates impact and prompts action. Year two will provide an opportunity to interrogate visual communication through a wider range of disciplines, including interaction design, illustration and branding. And in year three, you'll consolidate your knowledge by exploring your own voice as a creative practitioner, which you'll also consider in relation to climate science, social, racial and gender justice and your role as a citizen designer. So as you can see, it's also quite intersectional, which is really important. Um, climate justice really does branch across several different areas of inequality, and that's very evident. Um, it's also just again I'll reiterate this is a new course starting in September this year and therefore some of this information is subject to change so to keep an eye on the latest updates with the course please do keep an eye on our website so any changes will be taking place on there um, if this is the course that you're interested in. Lovely. Now let's talk about our Bachelors in Design Management. This course explores themes like business and leadership, global cultures, innovation and sustainability. You'll apply design thinking to live industry collaborations and learn how to address complex problems. This is a different type of course to those that I've talked about so far. It's focused a lot more on theory um, as the skill, okay? Um, so really important to note that. Next slide. As I mentioned, this course brings together the business world and the design world and meshes them together. A design manager is someone who bridges design, business and society, and who coordinates and leads projects and finds solutions using design thinking. And this can be across a number of industries, ones in which the creative, it can be in the creative sectors and also, um, you know, design managers who work in construction or IT, for example, things like that. Um, the course relies on a foundation of design thinking, as I've mentioned, which involves an approach to innovation and problem solving that takes into account the needs of people, the possibilities of technology and the requirements for business success. On the course, you will develop management skills in communication, presentation, critical reflection, scoping briefs, live research and feedback, uh, budgeting, time management and team working. Uh, as well as working on developing design principles like visual thinking, ideation, and working in multiple mediums, so including print, objects, images, video, sound, and the web. Um, students have created projects suggesting solutions to a variety of problems, so ranging from healthcare support to like supporting underrepresented artists to retail as well. Um, all the projects are linked in that they identify problems and find solutions using design thinking. You can expand project briefs from design and branding agencies, nonprofit organizations, research, strategy and marketing departments, startups, 
uh, financial tech companies. As I said, a design manager really can work in any sector or business where there is a problem or process that needs to be improved. The ultimate thing to remember as well is that the course aims to prepare you for a career whereby you use design as a driver for positive cultural change. Um, and that can also be social change, business change, environmental change across any number of sectors. Um, so yeah, a really nicely business-minded um, design program there. Now next we have our bachelors in graphic branding and identity. Uh, and this is designed to help you become a strategic thinker and a creative communicator. Uh, this is one of the only undergraduate courses in the country to deliver branding in the context of graphic design practice. You'll be able to develop the tools needed to become a professional practitioner in a really expansive industry. Okay. Now, on this course, you will learn both sides of creating powerful brand identity. So you'll not only be a designer, you'll also be a creative as well and uh, understanding brand strategy and how you implement your own creative ideas. You will explore branding across a wide range of skills and get to try a little bit of everything, which is very much fitting with LCC. Um, students have experimented with packaging, branding, fashion shoots, art direction, model building, projection mapping, um, and more. So yeah, really, really varied um, and, and an exciting course to be a part of, graphic branding and identity. Quick sip. Lovely, right, let's continue. Now looking at graphic and media design, um, probably one of our biggest courses here at LCC. Um, the course introduces core skills in design, visual communication, graphic media and emerging technologies. Um, so yeah, uh, a really good one there as well. Um, at its core, it's a graphic design course that draws from all the tradition and history that LCC has in this area. You'll use all the facilities, excuse me, you'll use all the facilities that LCC has to learn your fundamentals as a designer. This is not only a traditional graphic design course, the media in the course title means that students take those fundamentals and can apply them to emerging technologies, such as virtual reality, for example. The course is structured so that you start with the core graphic and visual design skills, and then the course expands to cover a huge range of experimental processes, um, platforms and technologies as well. Um, so lots of scope for more fingers in more pies there as well, which we always love. Now, next up, I am going to talk about illustration and visual media, um, or as we call it, uh, IVM. IVM's goal is to nurture creativity and produce illustrators who are prepared to take risks with their work in an effort to innovate. Um, you'll be encouraged to challenge, challenge existing preconceptions and definitions of illustration and to view yourself as a thinker as well as an image maker. There is no preset way of approaching illustration, so students work in a really expanded way. The course has no set style or method you'd be expected to work within. Now, because of this, you won't just be drawing, uh, you'll be photographing, printing, animating, filming, sculpting, uh, so really across the board, encouraging all sorts of different forms of creativity. Now, before you join the course, you really don't need to know how to draw perfectly, you just need to have a passion for making. Um, you will need a portfolio that demonstrates your passions and thought process, processes, sorry. Um, but like I said, you don't need to be a skilled illustrator before you join the course. Now, after graduation, a lot of students enter a wide and ver really varied range of professions working in art or illustration or also graphic design. Okay, so it really is uh, a, a broad one to be looking at, which is very exciting. Now we will talk about user experience design, or as we call it, we call it UX. Um, the goal for UX is to help students develop a creative practice with a focus on digital interfaces and experiences. So you'll explore the digital interfaces, platforms and emerging technologies that impact our daily lives. And that's super relevant right now as well. Um, the course allows you to be a designer that builds interfaces to make prototypes and web technologies. 
it's a practical course in the sense that you get to see your work being used in everyday situations. So that could be in the form of an app or um, maybe an installation in a, in a specific space. Um, it's, it's obviously, it's a skill that's extremely relevant right now with more and more of us living life through digital platforms. This is a great example, obviously, online open days. Um, and even that's not just a reference to COVID and lockdowns and obviously everything that we've kind of gone through since 2020, but as a society, just the fact that we're more connected to technology than ever before, um, also globally as well, super important. So as part of this, you will learn to use code, data and other digital materials alongside traditional design methods to realise your creative ambitions. But you don't need to know how to code before you join, really important. Many students will join the course with absolutely zero knowledge of coding or code, but they will have an interest and they need to have an interest in the digital and want to learn about it, of course. You will be introduced to the fundamental skills uh, needed for the course and this industry uh, and the skills required to create user interfaces using modern HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, one of the key spaces for this course is the Creative Technology Lab, uh, which is a great space where we have specialised technicians to help you build your areas. Uh, build your ideas rather. Um, all of the technicians across all of the spaces, which I'm sure Suki will talk about a bit later as well, are also incredibly helpful and kind of always there to help um, and in, in, in specialised areas. So this is absolutely no different. Um, students have created projects around a really wide range of topics using different types of technologies from highlighting artifacts and objects of immigrant communities, creating games to overcome loneliness um, and also experimental magazines using 3D models. So a really exciting space and also a degree to kind of be looking at. Now I'm going, go, going to go into service design. Um, another one of our new courses. So our bachelor's in service design teaches students how to improve the experiences of humans and non-humans through the design and redesign of services. Um, so a real focus on services, obviously. Service designers work with stakeholders to map, produce, and reorganize resources as services to achieve desired goals and produce unexpected results, okay? The service design course encourages students and staff, of course, as well, to design and teach at the forefront of service design as a discipline. The department aims to recognise that all design work is designing for a possible tangible, tangible future. The course teaches students to consider the systematic impacts of design on both the natural and built worlds and on individuals, communities and societies. Students are introduced to a variety of contemporary and historical methods for envisioning and disrupting possible futures, as well as enacting their own. Um, so in your studio-based learning, you'll be looking at uh, thinking through and experimenting with techniques, materials and technologies, um, obviously supported by the experts and the technical technicians that you have um, in those areas. Beginning in your first year of study as well, you'll be developing your practice as a as a service designer outside of the studio through live projects um, with human and non-human partners and participants. Now, similar to what we had before with um, Design for Climate Justice, this is a new course starting in September. Um, so this may also be subject to some changes. So as I said before, do, if you're interested in service design, keep an eye on the website to track any updates um, and any changes that might be taking place just to make sure you're super on top of the latest. Now I'm going to talk about interaction design arts, uh, the last course to mention and also Suki's opportunity to talk in a sec. I'll give a quick overview first. So uh, interaction design arts is a practice led dynamic and exploratory course examining the relationship between people and experiences through experimental technologies and processes. This course allows for a great amount of freedom, not only in the subjects you deal, with but um, how you approach those subjects as well, okay? RDA could be considered a course where design meets fine art in a lot of ways. Students are encouraged to pursue projects that put people at the center of their design and arts practice. Um, students on the course understand that design impacts the world at large and that they have a responsibility for the wider issues of sustainability, sustainability and social inclusivity. Um, 
yeah, so really, really important. The course is also media agnostic, which is a way of saying there is no preferred output for you to work in. Um, so students work with interaction, storytelling, moving image, um, alongside processes such as design prototyping, filmmaking, coding, uh, physical computing, and more. Um, the course has an ethos of high tech, low tech, no tech, and I'm sure maybe Suki will confirm that, <laughs> which is a way of getting students to define the best way of dealing with an issue. And this can be as simple or as complicated as it needs to be. IDA students are taught that the only boundaries are those set by their imagination and that creative ideas hold sway over technology. You will use the specialist studios to open to the course to, the, to work with technicians and tutors to realise your ideas. Um, because of how free the course can be, um, you can go on to any number of careers. So from artist to graphic designer to art director or producer. So again, more, more fingers in more pies. On the course, you ultimately learn to take, uh, you learn a way of creatively solving problems that you can take with you after you've graduated. Um, I will talk about the graduate showcase in a sec, but I would really high, highly recommend going to see the graduate showcase for this course to see the types of projects that students have dealt with. And you can see some of Suki's work there as well. Suki, I'm going to get you to talk about your experience of IDA for me, please. Um, well, so far it's been about two terms or like we're in the second term for IDA. But the reason that I chose this course was because I was interested in multiple things and I didn't really know where I wanted to be at the end of my degree, where I, I didn't want to choose something too specific. I was interested in animation, I was interested in prototyping, I was interested in, uh, in coding, and I felt like this course covered all of it in one go. So this project in particular was a GIF submission. We were supposed to make a GIF, but I made a zoetrope instead. So when you spin this thing, the animation plays in front of your eyes, which shows about shows that like you can submit something digitally but you can also submit something physically and it gives you a lot of freedom and i personally really enjoy that plus the tutors are honestly some of the best te teachers i've had in my life like they are extremely helpful and extremely supportive of any of your ideas but they will also tell you if you're going down the wrong path they're just the right balance of kind of people that you need giving advice on your work and yeah I enjoy this course a lot, personally. <laughs> Fab. <laughs> so, I mean, working with um, some of our academics, because I also know that doing my degree, like working with the tutors is just, can easily be the best part of a degree, at least from my experience. Um, so do you have an example of when they were like, don't go down that route, and then it paid off in a success? Uh, for example, just this project itself, they told me I was planning to use a motor, for this, behind this, there's like two gears, which when you spin one of them, the other one spins, and then this wheel in front spins. Um, they told me, I was planning to use motors for it, but then they told me that it would be much more interactive if you actually used gears instead. And I realized that I would have struggled a lot with motors because I would have had to learn how to code them, right? And that would, that would have involved a much longer process compared to actually sitting down and figuring out the gear ratios and the mathematics of making this thing work instead so oh. that paid off very well i think i'm very happy with this project yeah it looks amazing the picture is also stunning oh lovely brilliant and what are you looking forward to and what's coming up do you have an idea of things that are coming up any particular projects you're excited about um at the moment we have a new um, submission that we're going to be told about I think next week probably. So I'm excited to know what that is because they're always really, really like open, but they're yeah. also, you know that you're gonna learn stuff in it. It's not going to be that, okay, it's open-ended, you can do whatever you want. You know that at the end of it, you're gonna have some kind of knowledge that you've exchanged between you and the tutors. So I'm kind of excited for that at the moment. Oh, fair. Um, brilliant, thank you very much. Yeah, really helpful. Um... And yeah, if anyone has any questions for Suki on this specifically, please do write them and we'll we'll definitely get those answered. Um, thank you very much, Suki. So that was the last subject. Um, so that's uh, all of the kind of course specifics that we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna cover a couple of other things now before we head into our question time. Um, but uh, so because the course overview is done, I am gonna move on to talk about different areas of the college that you'll use as a student. But first, I really wanted to highlight the graduates showcase. Um, this is absolutely the best way to see work created by our students. Um, so this was originated um, a couple of years ago when 
lockdown happened and we were unable to hold any physical degree shows um so instead we worked to develop a platform where students can still show their work and connect with the industry um the url is on the screen please do take it and go and have a look because the work is absolutely remarkable and it's also a really great way to kind of see which areas might be of interest to you if you're still kind of in that place i know it took me a really long time to kind of narrow down my interest enough to even be able to choose a course so um yeah it might help you finesse some of your ideas just seeing what other people have done and think actually that's really really in line with what i'm interested in and it's leaning more towards this direction which i maybe didn't think it would be and um, so please do go and have a look um very quickly i want to talk about our diploma in professional studies this is an opportunity for all students in the design school um so it's it's not guaranteed for, for all students, excuse me. You have to apply for it, um, but it is uh, a really good opportunity regardless. Uh, essentially what the Diploma in Professional Studies will do is make your three year degree into a four year degree. You will spend your third year taking part in an internship or a placement or placements. Um, and there's a DPS team in the college to support you with applications and making contacts with these opportunities. So students have worked with a huge range of organisations. So they've worked with Apple, um, we've had Adidas headquarters, um, research studios, Channel 4, the Museum of Modern Art, I think the Tate, which is pretty unreal, um, the Pentagram, uh, Selfridges Design Department, uh, and more. There really is quite a list. Um, DPS has its only web pages uh, where you can uh, see examples of the types of experiences students, students have had uh, on their year out. Um, so really quite amazing, uh, an incredible opportunity there to get some actual working experience alongside the hands-on experience you'll be getting anyway. So I would definitely recommend if you're keen to get something like that uh, to do that. We also have a diploma, diploma excuse me, in creative computing. Uh, so similar to uh, DPS, this is another optional learning experience where you'll take a year out of your th three year degree and work towards a diploma in creative computing. So again, turning the three years into four at LCC. Uh, during this extra year, you'll be taught compute computational skills, shaping the future of the digital creative industries, working with emerging technologies. This is an opportunity that will probably seem more relevant to some than others. However, it is open to all. And as it would be in your third year of a four year degree, you can make that decision when you are on the course. So nothing to worry about right now. You can apply when you arrive, but it's worth kind of having in your mind as an opportunity if it's something you're super interested in. Now let's talk about our facilities. Facilities is without a doubt one of the most incredible things at uh, LCC, um, which I'm sure Suki can talk about at some point as well, maybe briefly. Um, LCC is a huge building full of workshops and studios and facilities that you can use to create your projects. When I started, I was like, whoa, I can't believe there's that much here. <laughs> You're doing what in here? So yeah, it was really eye-opening for me even coming in as a member of staff. There are different types of facilities, college-wide and then course-specific. So the college-wide ones are the ones that you, the list you see, uh, it's the list that you see right now. Um, that means that after an induction, any student who's a member of the college can use them, any student. Now, course specific, as it sounds, is a place um, that's uh, only for a group of courses, a space that is vital to the work done as a part of that course. Um, regardless of the type of facility, every space has specialist technicians to support you with making your work and helping you bring your ideas to life. As I said earlier, the technicians, I've heard so many students rave about the technicians and that's always really nice to hear. Um, LCC is not only full of technical facilities though, we also have our typo and vegan cafes, we have a canteen and we have a dark room bar where you can eat and drink on site. I know last night there was a postgraduate mixer event which was for University of the Arts London as a whole, so they run events there where you can really meet lots of other like-minded people and socialise. Um, we also have the information centre. Uh, the place, student services and the library. Um, I'll go into more details with some of these in a bit, but um, these are where you would go to get support in different ways, depending on what it, what you need. So, for example, if you need to help with a CV or if you were writing an essay and you wanted some tips 
um, or if you even needed to help with things like a council tax exemption or things like that. So we've got kind of a space for anything. Um, Suki, could you maybe just chat a little bit about the facilities that you have had access to and which ones you like? Yes, so um, last year I went to the printmaking workshop a lot and over there I basically spent any time, any free time that I had making prints and it was the most calming thing I've ever done. Everyone there is so nice and they are so helpful. I mess up with making prints a lot but the people there are so patient, like they're so sweet. They'll be there right next to you and they'll tell you how to fix the thing that you've done. Uh, yeah, so last year was printmaking for me. I think my favorite uh, facility was printmaking. This year, I've spent a lot of time in the Creative Technology Lab as well as um, yeah, the Creative Technology Lab and the 3D Workshop because for the project that I just showed, I needed to go to the Creative to the 3D Workshop and the Creative Technology Lab I used for making an app for earlier this term and even there they're just so patient with you even when you don't understand something they'll explain something multiple times it's like they're the they're the second tutors you have so you have your first set of tutors and then you have um the technicians who'd be helping you out with any techni technicalities as their uh, title suggests <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, fab. Yeah, no, it's good. And uh, you do tours for us as well, don't you, Suki, on some open days? Yes, yes. So um, going across all of them is kind of wild, right? It's like you don't even realize half of these things exist until you realize, then until you see them in person, and you're like, oh, I didn't know I could do that, and then you get really tempted to do it. <laughs> Definitely. I'm, I mean, I, I don't use most of them, at, well, any of them, and I'm like, what? That's amazing. So fantastic. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. So yeah, as I said, um, the uh, access to facilities is really, really um, important. Very quickly, Suki, as well, have you had much time to access the library since you've been at LCC? Yes, yes, because um, during our course, they often suggest that you can go and read certain books and read up on certain topics, but they also have special collections there, like they have the Stanley Kubrick archive and they have um, zine archives for like special collection zines where you can go and see them and then you can take inspiration from them, take pictures, use it in your work. Uh, and for that, I've had like Time, whenever I've had time, I've tried to look at those and take inspiration from that. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, the library is also a great space. Um, and I think I've, when I went to do my postgraduate, I was also kind of hyper aware of the fact that actually I'm potentially be spending a huge amount of time in the library. Um, and I wish I'd known that before I'd applied for an undergrad because it really would have been one of my focuses seeing what the library was like, you know? Um, yeah, so worth noting. Next slide, a really important part of studying um, anywhere is employability, um, not only after, but also options for working alongside studying. And LCC has definitely got a great range of opportunities here. Employability and preparing you for a job after uni is key. Uh, the Careers and Employability Department, first of all, are there to offer practical support in helping students and alumni into work. They offer advice with funding opportunities, your CV and interview prep. Um, UA students, UAL students across the board can access our online interview simulator. This tool provides advice, information, sample questions and a mock interview tool to help you prepare for face-to-face, -face, telephone or video interviews. Um, within the college, we also have the Placements, Careers and Enterprise Zone, which we call The Place. Here you can find out about a range of placements, careers and enterprise activities at LCC. There is also Arts Temps, which provides job opportunities to all UAL students and alumni. Arts Temps is also how we have hired Suki. Um, would you want to talk a little bit about work experience in Arts Temps for me, Suki? Yes, so Arts Temps, I've, I've been working with Arts Temps for like the, about a year and a half now, ever since I applied. I applied to be a student ambassador last uh, during my foundation year and Ever since then, I've been doing open days and I've been talking to people about what kind of uh, what it's like being a student here. Along with that, there's other jobs on there as well. They're all part time jobs. They're all they all pay really well as well because they value the students that work for them. And they don't take up much of your time in the sense that it's all according to your timetable. It's all everyone's really understanding of that. 
So, yeah. That's good. That's good to hear. <laughs> it's good for me to hear. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Especially with the ambassador role, we love to kind of, we understand obviously you're a student and that's got to come first while you're at the institution. Um, but the opportunity to work alongside is also so crucial, particularly right now in cost of living crisis, things like that are especially important. So thank you very much, Suki. Student support, obviously a really huge part of coming to a university. Our student services staff provide a professional, confidential and free service to UAL students and also where appropriate to prospective students from the UK or abroad who are considering applying for courses at the university. Um, they've just started drilling next door, which is the classic kind of <laughs> live presentation. If uh, for any reason it gets so loud you can't hear me, please just write on the chat and we'll make sure that you can, um, or we'll we'll figure a way around that. Hopefully they're not gonna be going too long and we're almost at the end. Um, so yeah, really important. There are three specialist teams within student services that uh, provide this support. I also just knocked my chair and fell. There we go. Hopefully you saw that even better <laughs> for your performance. Student advisors who are money and immigration specialists. So they provide guidance on how to fund studying in the UK and can assist international students with inquiries about visas and other immigration matters. We have counsellors, health advisors, um, they support the health and well-being of students by listening to them and helping them with issues cons um, concerns such as depression, anxiety or any kind of specific illnesses um, and by providing pastoral and spiritual care as well. And the third team is our disability advisors, dyslexia coordinators and specialist tutors. Now, they aim to remove the barriers that students may face and support them to work as independently as possible. OK, so that's our student services. Now, very quickly talk about your learning experience. The experience of learning at university is really different to school or college. You have um, a lot less time in class and a lot more time working independently. And this can sometimes take a bit of getting used to as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, your contact hours are typically front loaded into the first year to help you adjust, but as you get into second and third year, you will have a lot less contact time and be expected to work really independently. There is gonna be no uh, teacher uh, or, or parents to kind of be giving you the kick to make sure that you're meeting deadlines. That's stuff you have to manage yourself when you go to university. You will have a series of lectures, tutorials and seminars, uh, which will be with your tutors. And you might also book into technical workshops where you learn a certain skill, such as bookbinding or screen printing, for example. But then you also have independent study, and this can take place anywhere, okay? It can be at home, it can be in the studios, workshops, libraries, or other specialist facilities, but it's important that you make an effort to structure your time and allocate time to do that independent work. Time management becomes a really big thing when you go to university, um, and a massively important skill moving forward. Um, your tutors will be there to support you, and you can also use services like learning support, which is apart from our library, separate, but I guess the point that I'm really trying to make is that uh, it's different to what you know now and that's a good thing it might feel hard to adjust but that's normal everyone will be experiencing that um, and yeah it's just good to have in your mind beforehand okay now in terms of accommodation um, halls of residence are available to all students who have been offered a place at LCC you pick your top five halls of residence when you apply and the accommodation team will try to place you in one of your top five halls but we can't guarantee this as I can as I'm sure you can imagine it's extremely popular please make sure you send your application in early to avoid disappointment okay applications from international students disabled students and those under the age of 18 will be prioritized now, the closest halls to LTC in Highline, which is very popular, and as a result, not all students who apply there will get a place. Students also live in private accommodation, um, and the accommodation team can help with that as well. Now, some students that are traveling or live in and around London also do live at home. What typically happens when you go into your second and third year is that students will move into private accommodation with their friends, and this can be wherever you want to live, okay? Um, Suki, where is it you're living at the moment? It's in halls, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's the costume store. And the year before that, I lived in Chapter Lewisham, which was on the um, on the portfolio, but now it's not anymore. Okay, no problem. Fantastic. Um, yeah, do you like living there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's a really nice place. Everyone's really friendly, and um, the people here 
I mean, it's mostly fashion students, so you kind of get to learn a little bit about everyone's degree and what things are like in different courses. Very fun. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> Good to know. Um, yeah, where you're living is also an important part of choosing where you're going to study, right? So do give that some thought as well for everyone listening. Um, now, it's important to remember that it is not too late to apply. Um, so even though the UCAS deadline has passed, you can still apply to any course that still has places available. Um, if you're an international applicant, um, which now includes uh, yeah, everyone, anyone from the EU, you can apply in two ways, um, through one of your official representatives in your country, like an agent, but all undergraduate applications go through UCAS. Um, so if you're a home student as well, uh, or qualifies a home student, then you, you can apply via UCAS. We also have UCAS Extra as well, so do take a look at that. Um, for all these courses, you will need a portfolio and personal statement, and we have loads of advice, films, and previous open days about both on our website and YouTube channel if you want to learn more about either of those two things. Now, uh, we will lead on the questions. If you if you haven't got anything in mind, we've got a couple. Um, we have got some that have come up. Uh, if you just want to stay for the questions, please do. Um, if not, thank you so much uh, for coming. It was lovely to, yeah, I didn't see any of you, but I wish you all the best of luck with your application process and where you decide to go. Don't forget that if at any other point, I've got a list of um, options there, inquiries options. That So please do take a note of this slide before we get going. Um, anything that we either we can't answer or that you only think of at a later point can be answered um, through one of these email addresses. Now, on that note, Let's get some questions. Lovely. So I had this come in quite early from Federica. So I wonder if it's already been answered during the course of our presentation. However, uh, let's read it out. So for a student who is ultimately interested in user interface design, um, which course between UX and I'm guessing she means interaction design is better suited? Um, now, as we've said, IDA is a bit more uh, fine arts. Um, so my guess would be user, user experience design. However, um, if you want to have a look at both, uh, you can go on our website on our, uh, or on our YouTube channel where we have more in-depth course sessions there for you to have a look at. So yeah, do explore those. A really good tip just generally I think on the website as well is a lot of the time you get a bit more of a year by year breakdown. Um, it takes a little bit of clicking and scrolling down sometimes to find exactly the right thing but there'll be more information on specific modules and the content that's included in them so that you can make sure there's an opportunity there to cater to your specific interests, okay? Uh, lovely, next question. Can you book a visit outside of scheduled dates? Um, so yes, we do have facilities tours run by our info centre um, and those are run fairly regularly. You can book those on our website. They do get booked up quickly though. So um, do if you're interested, do book one. Um, but yes, we also have a range of uh, both virtual, online and in-person open days. Um, so if you want anything sort of uh, interactive, please do have a look on our website and yeah, please do give us a visit if you're able to as well. Absolutely. Um, being online is great, but there's no, nothing compares to coming on campus in person and just seeing if the vibe is right for you, I would say. Uh, lovely. OK, I, I have a question for uh, Suki. Um, what What's kind of your favourite aspect of LCC, your favourite thing? I feel like I've been saying that, that I feel like it would be the um, facilities because of just how much I get to learn there. I feel like a lot of my learning does happen outside of what I'm learning in class, like scheduled learning. I think my main learning for skills and for other developments and stuff is from the facilities that exist in LCC. I would say that my favorite thing is the facilities, yeah. Nice. Lovely, okay. Oh, we've had a few more come in. Um, what would be the typical contact hours per week in the first year? Yes, it does vary dependent on the course. Um, so you're interested in illustration and visual media. What I would do is have a look on the course website. Uh, it could give you a better idea then. And also if you have a look on our online open days, um, the course leader goes into in depth in what to expect in a sort of regular week then as well. Um, next question, how many students are enrolled in each BA programme roughly? Now, again, 
that does vary from course to course. Um, I, again, would probably recommend having a look on our online open days um, and uh, sort of having a look at your preferred course then as well. How many students are on your course, Suki, do you know? I think um, per year it's about 30 to 40. So it's a fairly small course for mine. But I also know that like I have friends from foundation who are now in GMD and stuff and they say their course is huge. They have like about 100, 120 people in one course and then they get divided into groups. So yeah, it varies from course to course. Great, thank you very much. A lot of our new ones will be much smaller, more personal um, or relatively new ones as well will be definitely smaller cohorts. But that each, each one of those options has its advantages. Um, I was part of a really, really small cohort when I first went and I did my drama degree and it was wonderful because I had a really personal relationship with every single other student. So the opportunity to collaborate was just incredible um, because I knew all of their skill sets like inside out and the same with my tutors, um, but with a bigger course. So I, that was before I did a, um, an initial degree like way back when um i was part of a huge cohort and that was equally fantastic for different reasons so maybe it was a bit less personal but there was so much scope to choose from in terms of learning from my my um my peers so yeah both kind of have a, a pros and cons i guess it's about figuring out what what would work best for you lovely um i have another question here um again specifically about uh, design for art direction um so it's it's how how is uh it, the time divided up between class and studio now i imagine you mean as um john has mentioned earlier the sort of split between independent study and teaching hours um obviously they are front loaded in sort of the first term so you do get more it varies by course um, so again, direct you to probably the course specific page to have a look there. Um, but yes, you will have more contact hours uh, in your first term, and then you'll sort of be expected to do your own independent study using the studios, using the facilities uh, then as well. Uh, thank you very much. And then last question we have here. Um, so. Aisha asks, what happens if you submit a portfolio late? Um, now, probably the best thing to do if you have any mitigating circumstances is to contact our admissions team. You can contact them through um, the general inquiries email on the screen at the moment. I will also drop um, their uh, admissions email on the in the chat as well. Um, Suki, I wonder, did you have any experience doing a portfolio and do you have any sort of tips that you could give? I, when I was applying for foundation, then I had to send in my portfolio through my country representative. But when I was applying through UCAS, there was a portal, um, I, I think Pebblepad, on which you had to upload your portfolio for each course you applied to. So I, I didn't have any kind of mitigating circumstances, but then as for advice, I would just say that be, uh, just show your interest, show everything that you would possibly want to explore within the course and how it's related to what you like. And mostly the tutors would see that and they would, if they see that and they agree with you, then you're in the course. It's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yes. And we have a lot more portfolio advice on our website as well. Oh, we've had a very last question come in. Um, so, yes, again, this is a UCAS specific question. Um, so, again, I would advise um, if you still want to apply for any of our courses uh, to go on UCAS and have a look through. Um, you can also get in touch with our admissions team if you have any specific questions there, if you want more sort of one to one direct support there as well. Hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, just to add on to that. So I think the question to ask our admissions team will probably be about your specific course, because at this point, because the UCAS deadline has passed, um, if you're looking at kind of this application period, then you would be really looking at making sure that the degree, the course that you're interested in still has places available um because otherwise it unfortunately is too late so yeah just keep that in mind when you ask our admissions team but they would definitely be the best people to write an email to lovely and very last question uh will there be a replay of this yes this will this is being recorded um so anybody attending this session live will get a copy via email but it will also be on our youtube page as well um so do have a look there if you want to revisit any of this 
Lovely. Okay. Um, Alvaro, probably I can see you're asking quite a few questions about places on sort of clearing or UCAS Extra. So yeah, definitely get in touch with our admissions team for those as well. We, they can answer those a bit better than we can. Lovely. I think that brings us to the end of questions then. Um, just want to have a quick no problem. <laughs> John, thank you there. Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us as well. Um, any last thoughts from either of you? Suki? <laughs> well, I, I just hope that if someone chooses LTC, I hope they have a good time here and I hope to see them soon. That's it. <laughs> I would absolutely reiterate that it can be a really stressful period choosing um, where you're going and yeah the choice is a really big part of the whole process just really really trust I would say kind of the place that makes you feel the best when you're on site you I my experiences that I was like I actually really feel comfortable here I can see myself here almost every day and I would really lead with that um as, as far as possible obviously you also need to make sure it's the right course and all that kind of thing but um but yeah leading with that also is incredibly helpful so and good luck guys and thank you very much for listening to me talk for such a long time <laughs> um and enjoy the rest of your day lovely thank you very much everyone and yeah best of luck in your applications thank you bye 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 bye